Three, two, one. First one millionth of a second after nuclear detonation, the heat is already so extreme that a ball of plasma forms. It's a fireball so hot, it reduces everything inside it to subatomic particles. The core of our star is 15 million degrees Celsius, making it the hottest point in the entire solar system. But for a brief moment in time, it becomes the second hottest point because the core of a nuclear fireball can reach 100 million degrees. To put that in perspective, that's 20 thousand times hotter than the vaporization point of diamond, one of the most resilient materials in the entire universe. So it doesn't matter if you're in a fridge or a bunker or a bunker made of diamond, if you're inside of this fireball, you will get deleted from existence. All of this heat radiates outward at the speed of light, instantly scorching anything unfortunate enough to be within view. This real test footage shows the paint getting vaporized at the moment of detonation. It's quite literally a laser engraver, but like, everywhere. Anything combustible immediately ignites on fire, including everything within a mile of this explosion. All the people within a mile and a half would receive third degree burns. It's a burn so bad you don't even feel it. And looking at this test footage, what I find fascinating is that it's not actually windy. What we're seeing is the heat of the nuke pushing the smoke away like it's the solar wind or something. It's just that intense. The shockwave is a sphere of high pressure air that expands outward faster than the speed of sound. In fact, this shockwave is so powerful, it levels up into something even deadlier. When it hits the ground, it reflects back up to recombine with itself, forming what's called a mock stem. It gives the shockwave a razor's edge, shaving the city down to rubble. It's been a few seconds at this point, but the explosion is still happening. The shockwave leaves behind a pressure vacuum, which sucks all the air back in with hurricane force winds. It's not as strong as the initial shockwave, but this is more insidious. The rushing air feeds the flames, which create fire tornadoes that swell to hundreds of feet high. This terrifying reality is called a firestorm and is exactly what happened to Hiroshima. It was a city made almost entirely of wood. One thousand two hundred kilotons. Yeah, this is a megaton bomb. I'm using a tool called Nuke Maps. If you just Google search Nuke Maps, you'll find this. Just plug in the warhead yield of your choice, whether or not it's detonating on the surface or if it's an airburst. Then you just hit detonate. This is the fireball, this is the strongest part of the shockwave, and this signifies where everyone gets third degree burns. This is what the Trinity explosion would look like in downtown LA, but if I put in the B-83 of 1200 kilotons, that detonation would look like this. It's like almost two miles wide, just the fireball. Now the B-83 is just the most powerful nuke that we currently have in our arsenal. We've tested many more powerful nukes. For instance, the Russians tested the Tsar Bomba, which was a 50 megaton bomb. And this would literally destroy the entirety of Los Angeles. I just turned on the casualties. Estimated casualties are about 3 million people. Instantly. Shalom. First and foremost, all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rekar Kodash. Double honors. To the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, salutations to the hopeful elect pushing this word in truth and in sincerity. To the Israelite foreigners scattered throughout the four corners of the earth who may look like the heathen nations. And to the very few sisters that listen and learn to you, Shalom. All right, I'm the brother Yasharala with Great Millstone Chicago. And as you've seen in the video, um, going into a nuclear bomb, right? And that's just one, all right? That's just one nuclear blast. All right, the scriptures talk about 200,000, which <coughs> it's going to be, it's going to be so many missiles, nuclear missiles going off that it says the earth is going to shake to and fro, all right, so that was just one. Imagine space getting hit with hundreds of thousands. 
All right. Um, I'm going to start in the second Peter three and 10. It says, but the day of Yahweh will come as a thief in the night and the which the heavens shall pass away with the great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works there are that are therein shall be burnt up. So, you know, like you've seen in the video, anything within that initial blast is going to basically go back to being elements. All right. Scriptures talk about uh, Babylon, which is America, becoming a wilderness, a desert. All right. Everything. If you're if you are in America currently, you know, wherever you may be watching this video, just know that whatever place you're at, the place you're standing, you're driving by, you know, whatever, it's all going to be burnt up. All right. America in the whole will melt with fervent heat. All right. Which um, I forget how it says 200,000 thousand missiles which is like 200 million or something like that. I forget. So lucky. I'm just roughly paraphrasing it. That's that's a lot of fire. That's a lot of destruction that's coming to this place because of its wickedness. And it's going to come like a thief in the night when people least expect it. It says seeing then of second Peter three and 11, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness. So knowing that, you know, this is gonna this is going to happen. Let's get the beginning of it. You know, that's gonna happen on a grand scale, not just one. You know, hey, we're how how are we supposed to uh, conduct ourselves? How are we supposed to behave? We're supposed to try to get in the best um, favor of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai as possible before that day comes. Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall dissolve and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And we're looking forward to this day, all right, because the downfall of Babylon. <coughs> is um you know the uprising of our kingdom you know nevertheless we according to his promise look for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness now this isn't talking about the we're gonna the whole earth is gonna blow up and there's gonna be a whole new earth created no all right the earth is always gonna be here it's gonna be um the, the new kingdom, the new rulership, and it's going to be the earth being refreshed back to its original estate. Paradise, right? That's what we're looking for, a place where it dwelleth righteousness. Because this world right now, like it says in Job, is given into the hands of the wicked. So this earth is ruled by the wicked right now. And I'm just going to read through these. All right. Isaiah 66 and 15. For behold, Yahweh will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebukes, his rebuke with flames of fire. And how is he going to do that? By sending his son Yahweh Shai. By putting the spirit on these nations to, to shoot these nuclear missiles off. Verse 16, for by fire and by his sword will Yahweh plead with all flesh and the slain of Yahweh shall be many. All right. And that's ultimately going to be through these missiles. You're going to have the chariots shooting out. Excuse me. Laser beams, you know, zapping people. All right. You can even have the account in second Ezra 13, if I'm not mistaken. It talks about, you know, 
the fire coming out of the chariot. So this place, America and other parts of the world is going to be judged by fire. All right. This is prophecy that will soon come to pass. All right. Malachi 4 and 1, for behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith Yahweh of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. And this is the judgment. All right. This is going to be the judgment of the wicked. And here in America. All right. <clears throat> two thirds of you uh, wicked Israelites who don't want to get right. All right, this is going to be the judgment. It says um, that they shall uh, melt away like a snail. All right, now this this could be you know the the bomb blow up, boom, bam, all it is, right? Like two seconds, three <laughs> three seconds. Hey, but in that fire, it's gonna feel like it, uh, eternity. All right. They're going to be dwelling in torments. All right. So, yeah, on regular time, you know, it's going to feel like it will be, you know, however many seconds. We don't know. And, you know, it don't take that long for the nukes to completely burn this place up. But, you know, it's going to be as, um, you know, a snail that melteth. All right. It's going to you're going to. Uh, for the ones who are going to get caught in this destruction, you're going to feel like you've been in there for an eternity. All right. Look at that. That's crazy. That's just one. And there's going to be more casualties than that. Three million. All right. America is populated with about what? Three hundred and like sixty, three hundred and seventy million, which the one third is a small number within that number. So you could best bet there's is gonna be a close of three hundred and something million, you know, the mixed multitude and have um, you know, the ones uh, the men, women and children, you know, we don't know. It's gonna it's gonna be a, a large number, but for the most part, all right, the one third is a small number. All right, and that's the ones that are gonna be saved out of America, Babylon. All right, so you're looking at hundreds of millions of people receiving this judgment. Zechariah 14 and 12, and this shall be the plague wherewith Yahweh will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem, which Jerusalem is speaking about the Israelites. Okay, not the land. All right, speaking of the people. It says their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet and their eyes shall consume away in their holes and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. So you're going to uh, this judgment is going to happen to where you're going to be melting on your while you're still standing on your feet. All right. So we don't know. You know, it, it could feel like a thousand years being in that in that fire. All right. We don't we don't know, but we do know it's going to it's going to feel like an eternity. OK. Which I don't want none of that smoke. So I, I'm doing the best that I can to serve you. How about me? How was on this side? So, you know, we could receive salvation and not take part of that. Zechariah 13 and 8, and it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith Yahweh, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein, which this is go talking about here in America. Two thirds of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and you Israelites who look like the other nations here in Babylon, you're going to be cut off and die. All right. And he's going to take the one third. All right, he says, verse nine, and I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as and will try them as gold is tried. 
They shall call on my name and I will hear them and I will say it is my people and they shall say Yahweh is my power, is my God. And those are the ones that are calling on the true names because there's only one name. He doesn't have multiple names. You know, God, have only the father has one name, Yahweh. His son has one name, Yahweh Shai. <clears throat> there's only one name given under heaven whereby we must be saved. All right, so... They're going to be saved. They're going to be taken out of this destruction. All right. And we're going through this physical. Uh, we're going through the spiritual fire now being tried as gold in the furnace, you know, acceptable men in the furnace of that affliction or adversity, roughly paraphrasing. You know, so we're going through this, uh, the spiritual fire now and being refined. You know, scriptures talk about he was going to make a man more precious than fine gold all right those are the men of the lord all right we're going through the spiritual process of being cleansed right by fire but there's going to be a physical fire which we don't want to be a part of that all right so you know this is something that popped up on my tiktok like you know it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power or through the through the uh the terror of the Lord we persuade men. All right, do you want do you want to be about that? You want to be about this world, this present evil, wicked world, and please your flesh for a, a just for a, a season to 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 have to go through this judgment, or do you want to um put your how by shimmy how aside first and foremost, change your life up. Serve him to the best of your, of your ability and receive salvation and not take part in this destruction. You know, it's only it's only your salvation, like the brother Capel says. <laughs> it's only your salvation, you know, so how willingness is edifying to next time. Shalom.